All right, part one of the uh, electrical on the 74 valiant here. Uh, since I know I'm going to have to get at the alternator gauge there, it plays heavily in what was going on here. I also see by the manual, the electrical um, schematic, that there's another voltage uh, limiter in behind here to make sure the dash itself doesn't get too much current. Uh, that could also be screwed, and that allowed all that voltage and amperage to bleed into the uh, column. So uh, there's no doubt that the uh, instrument cluster is going to have to come out. I'll have a look at the back, see if there's any burned wires back there. Uh, that means dropping the steering wheel down. Uh, I'll probably take the uh, whatever casement I can get off here to, to have a look at the wires in there. And uh, get into the steering wheel as well, take the, the horn thing off and have a look behind the steering wheel. Maybe take the ignition key out so I can see in there. And uh, yeah, so that's where it's going to start anyway. I definitely, uh, I know I'm going to find some shit behind the behind the gauge cluster there. So. Yeah, that'll allow the uh, column to come down and drop. I thought I had to take these bigger bolts off, but actually that's a whole one bracket, so... Okay, without without taking anything else out, that's as low as it'll go, but that might give us what we need. I can sort of get at the speedometer cable now. Off. All right, this totally isn't my normal uh, angle, so I'll have to see how much I can work with it. It's a little too close to my face. Um, I got the gauges out. Wasn't too terribly bad. A little bit of a pain in the ass to try and get these electrical connectors off when you can only get the dash out a little bit. The repair manual says to go in from behind the dash and all that shit, but I would challenge anybody I know that nobody has small enough fingers for me. You'd have to get some child labor. Um, anyway, things look pretty good back here. The circuit board, um, all the traces are still all good. Sometimes you see those lifted up and they don't make good connections. A whole bunch of the lamps fell out, but uh, this is the opportunity to replace all the lights. Uh, this is here wobbly. i got to figure out a better way to mount that. Um, but actually, let's, uh, you're upright, you know, pretty good unit. I'll clean that up, um, put all new lamps in and, uh, yeah, we'll see what's up with that. These were the two wires I expected were going to be burnt out. This is where the, uh, 64 Chrysler that I had was a problem, uh, but still the same design, exactly the same design as what I had with 64, which is, these are super hot wires that come from the back of the uh, alternator. So these carry, at some point or other, all the juice that the alternator can put out. Um, which is a little much for wires of this size. Now, these maybe one gauge better than um, than what was in the old Chrysler but I expected these to be burnt out I might just for the sake of being safe 
Um, I might not put it back exactly the way it was because I, I have a feeling that even if I find whatever the hell's going on here, these might still be an issue in the future. So we shall see. Uh, this is one of the main uh, gauge cluster wires. Uh, these are some of the plugs that were really hard to get out when, uh, you know, when the dash couldn't come out all that much. You have to remove the uh, speedometer cable f first before getting the dash off. Uh, here's another bundle here. But none of these that I'm seeing right now are noticeably burnt. For what I was smelling, uh, some of these should be noticeable. So I had to look back here anyway because, like I say, you know, that these were going to be the the obvious choices. But um, you know, there's a little bit of how you do in somebody else's. Uh, so I, I probably should pull the tape off that and make sure that that it's done well. Uh, I think this is the blinker solenoid, I think. Oh, what do you know? Made in the USA. God damn. That is old, isn't it? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's what the inside of the uh, dash looks like. Uh, I'll also take this opportunity to uh, re-secure the um, defrost tubes. This one is still intact, and um, it still works. Uh, the other one deeper down, the one on the right side, or the passenger side. Uh, but this is still the time to kind of fuck with that. While well, this is all open, I did drop the steering wheel. I saw some of that. Uh, uh, I haven't had a good look down there, so you might actually see something I haven't yet. But it's another source for uh, some of the um, sources of smoke. Uh, I was able to get uh, all this accomplished, and uh, at the speed that I work, that's kind of that's kind of how she goes. So that's good, you know. Got other stuff over here. I'm just going to leave the tools in here and continue on with stuff. Here's the horn bumper, and <laughs> like this is all metal inside. This is supposed to somehow protect your head if you were to hit that in a collision or whatever. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't think that padding is really going to cut it. Anyway, uh, thanks for all your support. I've, I've had a few messages from people on uh, either Facebook or YouTube, uh, you know, sending condolences. But truth be known, um, all these sorts of little failures are what make owning a classic car interesting. <laughs> um, I do find it to be fun. I get frustrated easily and, you know, uh, trying to get the freaking connectors off and, you know, cut myself on the inside of the dash and whatnot. But... Uh, but it really is, uh, it's a part of the process. You have to be willing to not only get dirty, but get cut. And, uh, I mean, now that I have this out, I can, you know, study exactly the layout and all that sort of stuff, test these connectors, make sure that they're all good. And it's a good, it's actually a good thing to have happen when it comes right down to it, because I will know once this goes back together, it'll be better than it was. So, just one of the things, you'll. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Talk soon. Bye.